Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever sequel to a video that I've ever made ever in my life. So I hope it's full of action. It is definitely full of crashes. I really hope you enjoy it. We're gonna get straight into it. We're gonna talk a little bit about what happened in day one. If you wanna go watch it, feel free to watch it. If you don't wanna watch it, then, then whatever, whatever. I'm still gonna go and make up these positions as I'm doing right here with or without your viewership for day one but however if you don't watch it this is what's going to happen as i fall back because because you are not watching day one it is it is all because you have not watched day one so clearly not my fault clearly not my race craft so i hope i hope that you feel totally ashamed of yourself as we get into the race and try to make up for some of your mistakes so let's get into it right now. We are now working with Hansen to make up for what we have lost. What kind of what we tried to make, but then we kind of lost back into a neutral position. I was doing pretty well through this bull section through here, but no opportunity to make a pass. Now, you might be wondering, why is this dude going in the reverse direction of the track? Well, if you're wondering that, it's because you have gone to watch the first race as I absolutely below myself way past the apex through there but we have changed the rotation of the track and that's kind of the idea of this layout of the weekend so first day you're gonna have four races a little bit shorter bit of a race as i have an opportunity right here to make a move seeing some fighting losing their momentum and i'm able to just make up one place through there but as i was saying throughout the weekend you have Friday practice and actually interesting in Friday practice you'll have two sessions going one way clockwise the other session you'll be going counterclockwise and you'll just rotate um, two and two throughout the day so you get a total of four sessions in one direction four sessions in the other direction the reason you can do that is, is this is all four stroke racing and there's not too many classes so you actually get a pretty decent amount of practice time out there as well so you do use the same set of tires throughout the whole event. So these tires are day old. You don't get to change them. You, I believe you also aren't allowed to change them for warm up as well. I forget. What you're not allowed to do though is push off my teammate into the dirt. Even though I'm making up positions, still not fair. And with more fighting, we have more opportunities to make up a space right through there. However, she's gonna fight back and try to make a move on me. One of the things that I noticed from yesterday was I do think I was on the wrong gearing throughout the day. You could probably tell as Simon actually makes a pretty incredible move through there. Now I'm gonna try to make a move for myself back. So now I'm kind of in the same place. However, I have someone else in front of me, someone else behind me. Just a little bit of a, you know, switching it up through there as we go into lap five. As I was saying, the thing that I noticed throughout the day one and I guess maybe I was just hesitant to make changes hesitant to kind of just take a risk on the setup sometimes I kind of I've noticed myself I kind of get caught in the idea oh if I make a setup change maybe I should but it's probably gonna get worse I gotta you know if I would have maybe had the mentality of like who knows I got four races might as well try something try a higher sprocket or actually lower sprocket um, to see if I can get more top speed and I can continue to maintain the amount of speed that I carry through the corners as I try to battle it out through there into the bowl with Simon. Doesn't really work out for me. We just lose a bunch of time. Now, he's obviously pissed off. I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude, you know, just try my best here. I do need to protect myself from getting overtaken from behind. So at one point, I need to make a move. And at that point is this point, as you see, as I am way further along, I'm able to shuffle myself through there, and so is the 167. She's able to get behind them as well. Now, as we fast forward into lap 12, we kind of just settled down a little bit, and going back to the whole gearing setup conversation, it's probably one of the things that I should have definitely considered, at least trying it for a race, especially knowing that I do have a different set of rims as I try, as they try to get past me through there. Knowing that I have a different set of rims, the seven inch rims are gonna have a smaller rollout than the six inch rims. It's just the way that you stretch out the tire. And what that's gonna do is I'm gonna have a different gear ratio, final final drive ratio, if you wanna call it. Um, let's say compared to Seth, who I, do, who I did know was running the same sprocket as me. So he still has more top speed. It's just the fact that he has more of a rollout. Now, knowing that, that's definitely something that I should have potentially tried and done 
because as you can tell right here that was kind of the thing that i was running into yesterday here it's a bit different i actually don't remember at the moment what gear i was on i do know for the second race i was a gear down from what i was on day one i don't know at the moment if i had made the change at this time but we're going to get into the final three laps we are clearly just going to be fighting for ourselves here and i think the pressure has gone into the 167 as they get all over the place through there and we get tucked in we're still in ninth place we can try to get ourselves a nice top 10 we're gonna see there's two positions in the top 10 there is one outside of the top 10 so the probability is that we can probably be in the top 10 let's see if that actually works out so we're gonna get in there's clearly someone had gone off the track there a bunch of rocks all over the place now they're not going to make a move on me at the moment i do need to be careful of that and you can see the amount of time i actually make up through this bull here as i was talking about earlier i'm able to space myself out a little bit but then she's able to kind of reach back in now is that a little bit of slipstream i'm not sure different lines i'm not sure what i do know is look at behind here we're going to take slightly different lines apexing at slightly different points now for me that actually benefited me a lot so and that was one of the things looking back in the videos i'm trying to figure out you know what was the best line what was the best line through here and something that i try to apply as well just throughout the race weekend it's one of the things that i really like having about i mean it's not just for the viewers right having these two cameras as i go super defensive through here i'm going to try to hold off the line and see if she can kind of just work with me right now at the moment to get away from Simon. The more we fight, the more Simon is just going to be able to stay in place. But he's also doing a really good job at just sticking with us no matter what. But as I was saying, one of the things I really like about these two cameras is obviously I can see what's going on in front of me with my own eyes. Yes, it's always good to review it as I go defensive through here. Probably shouldn't have gone defensive. However, let's see if we can maybe carry our speed through here. It's going to kind of sacrifice us for the rest of that SS section, but we're able to make up pretty decent pace, but they always close in on me pretty quickly through here. But again, going back to the conversation, it's good to also have that rear view camera because sometimes you don't know where the people behind you are gaining time on you. There is some points, and we'll talk about it actually in the second race, where you can kind of guess how you did versus the other lap based on when you feel the bump and speaking of when you feel the bump getting absolutely moved out of the way simon once again making up two positions i'm gonna see if i can make up a position through here it's not gonna work this is the final lap and we come home in 11th and if you remember me saying about the probabilities just totally forgot about that now if you remember a few events from potentially yesterday, you might think, oh, we're going to start 11th because that's where we finished. No, we're actually going to start 12th. And if you're wondering what event that is, it is this event. So one of the things I actually talked about in the previous video was kind of how this worked. It's not based off how you position, but, th but think about these five races, uh, sorry, six races, kind of like as a season. So the person who wins isn't the person who wins the race at the sixth race. It's actually who has the most points over the whole course of the event. So we're going to see what we can do here. We're going to get started. It's going to get pretty hectic through here. We're going to see carts getting pushed, carts getting sideways, carts in front of me, carts on top of me. And if you look at the rear view camera, it is an absolute mess right here. So we have just about, you know the whole field in the way and somehow the tony cart driver in the burrell cart making his way through the pack so pretty pretty intense stuff i was uh lucky to have survived that now we didn't fully fully survive that as we make a move through here we'll talk about that in just a sec seth actually got through the pack pretty pretty well so this is actually diego right here not only was he pretty unlucky on the first race as he got absolutely shafted by the guy right there in front of him but let's go take a look and see from his view what happened he gets right on the curb someone else is pushing him behind him and then because he's on that curb he doesn't have the grip and the moment he's just kind of bottoming out the chassis and it's super easy to just get sideways through there so 
very, very, very unfortunate for him. And I am feeling a very, very heavy steering wheel as this person on the left clearly taking his time to clean up the cart. But look at that bent tie rod. The steering column is kind of hard to tell, but it's also bent as well. So not only have we survived those turn one incidents, but we also have changed our setup. One of the things that I was, you know, so hesitant to do throughout day one, we have done a setup change midway through the race. We have now more toe out, probably some more caster, I think, because of the bent steering column. I don't know. The steering wheel feels super heavy through this section. The good thing is, if this was the different layout, going this left hand, there was actually an opportunity for me to kind of rest my hands because I wasn't fighting the cart to turn left. I was fighting it to turn right. So it was always through the sections, for example, right here. It was extremely hard to get the cart rotated in terms of, not in terms of its willingness to be rotated as Seth and I here in our new and improved peace treaty gonna work together here. Now, it doesn't really work out because the person behind them is pushing him, but I'm gonna see if I can kind of make up some moves through here. We have Albert actually in front of us, up into P6, really, really good stuff for him. He must have gotten a really, really good start, taking advantage of all the action, so to speak, uh, from turn one. Actually, not turn one, but turn, I believe, three, two, four, it's just like the first section of the race, pretty much. Now. Seth and I are gonna to work together here. We have Albert in front of us. We're gonna see how far back, not how far back, but how quickly we can get past Albert and how far away we can get ourselves from everyone else behind us. So I almost track it way too far out. I definitely had the rear wheel hanging a little bit. I'm gonna look at Albert. The reason I give him the thumbs up is because he just said, go along, continue, which is actually kind of really nice of him, um, very, uh, team matey of him as he lets both Seth and I through there and I kind of made a big fast forward into lap 11 you're gonna see that it's just really Seth and I there's some Burrell cart behind us there's a group starting to kind of build up those last four laps it was really just Seth and I kind of moving along and this is where I was talking about just a few minutes ago through this section here I can tell how well I did relative to Seth because there's going to be a point where he bumps me. We know many videos before set this super consistent, so it's really easy to use him as a reference. So I would know that, for example, sometimes he would bump me before those S's, sometimes he would bump me way before them, and sometimes he wouldn't bump me. And that would actually kind of give me an idea of how I did through those sections. But not only that, but it started to allow me to calculate where is he going to be based on how I feel that I did through those S's. So it's kind of a nice way to determine, do I need to go defensive here? Obviously at the moment, we're just working together, but it's an interesting thought to have and an interesting way of thinking about it when you're actually racing, starting to use that, the, ability, the point at which your opponent is bumping you based on how you know you did through a section before the straight, it's gonna help you know whether or not you need to go defensive or not, if you're at a point where you're battling. So if you actually look back, there has been a bit of a shuffle in the order behind us. We are actually in a really, really good spot right now, taking advantage of everything that had gone on. There hadn't been too much action throughout the race, but right now we have Toby who got absolutely shafted to the rear in the beginning of the race. He has made up a ton of places at the moment, in this place, in this point in time, I am not aware that he is fighting through the pack. I still think it's just Seth and I and those people all the way far back. So as you see in the rear camera, Seth knows that he's going to make a move. He, for his own sake, is going to go ahead and make a move with him. Now, I kind of get in this like weird middle point where I'm not able to get back on my line. So Hanson is going to try to get back on inside me. You could see his side pod is just about at a right angle from the ground. Normally side pods are parallel to the ground or at least the bar that connects it to the chassis. And Seth almost getting overtaken through there, taking an absolutely different line. I'm actually, is he going to make the pass? And he somehow makes the pass through there. I, we'll have to You'll have to rewind and see exactly how that happened. I'm gonna rewind later and see exactly how that happened. I have no clue how that happened, 
pretty incredible move through there actually and probably a bit of like forcing Seth off his line very first time I'd seen that one before so I am now focused on not losing them one of the things as I was talking about earlier as I kind of cut out of the race because it was just really me and Seth just kind of moving along moving along moving along as I make as I, as I allow other people to clearly just, you know, move along, I started to get some drop in lap time. And I do, I, I do believe that, that was because I aired up my tires a bit too high. So not something I really talk about too much. Um, one of the things that I really consider is depending on the length of the race, depending on the heat, all those kind of factors for example this is a very long race so you want to kind of make those compromises in the sense of how high do you want your pressures to be you air up you air up on the higher end your tires going to come in a lot faster you air up on the lower end your tires aren't going to come in as fast however they won't begin to overheat as quickly you have less air in there now it's kind of forget about the side of oh it's less air it's more motion on the sidewalls and things like that that's not really too much of a factor right now we'll think about purely just the amount of air molecules in there and the amount of heat that are that is being produced um and transferred and you know blah 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 blah, blah as we get into the final lap i started to feel just especially through this section here my rear end starting to kick out a little bit i don't think the fact that i had you know a bit of an alignment issue on the front was really benefiting me it was probably starting to overheat my left front tire maybe even um the rear tires as well not too sure i didn't go ahead and take a pressure gauge to it immediately after the race but i do know that i was feeling the tires to come a bit off i and i was trying to think about maybe am i overdriving it maybe i'm not but it truly felt like i had lost grip for the final not just final three laps for the final five laps or anything like that but regardless it is P9, where we're going to finish, and if you look back, and the reason I thought this was a pretty important weekend is, you know, obviously things didn't really necessarily go our way, but I was using this weekend to reference off where I've been last year, and to think about, even for some moments, I was up there, you know, P3, P2, it might have been through external factors or anything like that. It's still good to see that I was able to make some progress throughout the year of karting that I've had. It's, I don't know, kind of a kind of a pretty cool reflection point. So things might have not gone exactly how I would have liked, exactly as how I would have hoped. I did make some pretty, some mistakes I really hope not to make again in the future. But I really enjoyed this weekend to be able to look back, see how, see where I've come, see where I'm at, see where I need to continue to improve. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll be back with some more videos of Tri-C Chill Challenge, some more videos in a BMW that I believe I promised a while ago that will finally be out. So stay tuned, I'll be back.